Labour is in crisis ever since a coup uh, attempted to overthrow Jeremy Corbyn and now the workings of the opposition have basically collapsed. So now there's a leadership contest which is taking place and you've got obviously Jeremy Corbyn standing and also now Owen Smith has declared his candidacy as well. Now I'm going to talk to people in terms of people on Jeremy Corbyn's side, Jeremy Corbyn himself hopefully as well as MPs supporting him and also Owen Smith and the MPs talking to him. Now, one of them is Lisa Nandy. Lisa Nandy uh, is a, a cracking Labour MP, got huge respect, I think, from all sides of the party. Uh, disclaimer, I actually tried to get to stand for leader just after the last general election, uh, but she had a kid, so fair enough. Uh, but I want to interrogate her, you know, what really is going on? You know, why has this coup been launched against Jeremy Corbyn, who, after all, was only elected not that long ago, and is Owen Smith, who she's supporting, really the answer? That's what we're talking to her about. Hello, Lisa Nandy, MP for Wigan, laughing at me already, honestly. Um, these are such quiet times, there's so little to speak about, isn't there? There's a hell of a lot going on, um, <laughs> and it's been a difficult few months. It's that Chinese uh, proverb, isn't it? May you live in interesting times, and they're certainly interesting. May not. you not. Yeah, may we not. So, Labour's current turmoil. Uh, Jamie Corbyn was elected last year with nearly 60% of the vote. So a lot of members are now going, why do we have to have another vote on this? We just, we decided, we made up our mind, we gave this huge mandate, and we expect the Parliamentary Labour Party to, to fall in line behind what the membership has democratically decided. What, what would you say to those members? There are a number of people in the Parliamentary Labour Party who never accepted the fact that Jeremy Corbyn had been elected as leader, and that was obvious from day one. Mm. I have to say I wasn't one of them. Um, I, he asked me to join his shadow cabinet, and I was really proud to do so and to work for him for the last 10 months. The group of people who decided to walk off the pitch who have consistently tried to undermine him haven't just done a disservice to him, they've actually done a disservice to the Labour Party because they don't respect the office of the leader and at that point the system cannot survive. But what you saw happen over the last few months and particularly on that catastrophic weekend after the EU referendum when there was a wave of resignations on the Sunday is not just the group of people who have always struggled with Jeremy's leadership election, losing faith, but actually people who have very much been inside the tent, tried to make it work. It seems to me at that moment that it really became apparent how much the leadership of the party had lost the centre of the parliamentary party. And the truth is that you can't function as a political party if you can't hold the centre. Most people in here are quite pragmatic, they care deeply and passionately about achieving social justice. We differ sometimes on the way to do that, but most people will negotiate and compromise, debate behind the scenes, and they will hold a line, even where they feel that's quite a difficult thing to do. But what became really apparent over that weekend is just how far the current leadership had lost the centre. So, I mean, with the membership, a lot of people supporting Jamie Corbyn go, hang on a minute, you know, he's presented as this being disaster. But, you know, we've had U-turns on tax credits, for example. The Olden by-election, widely predicted, Labour would do very badly. The majority was increased. Uh, the local elections, it was it predicted that, I don't know, Labour could lose 200 seats. Labour yeah. did lose seats, but it was only about 15 or whatever it was. So why, what's the justification for a coup? That's, that's what people would, that's what they argue. Yeah, and look, you know, I, I don't know, because... Uh, nobody rang me up about a coup. Nobody in their right mind would have done that. They know that, you know, unlike a lot of members of the Shadow Cabinet, I've known Jeremy since I was 21 years old, actually. You know, I don't buy this idea, actually, that Jeremy Corbyn is responsible for the problems that we've got. The problems that we've got existed long before Jeremy yeah. Corbyn. But look, here is the scale of the crisis that Labour faces. We have uh, one wing of the Parliamentary Labour Party and the party as a whole that has been in power, uh, was in power for a long time, and then we have the current leadership. And when the resignation started to unfold on the Sunday, I went in to see Jeremy on the Monday morning to talk to him with a group of like-minded colleagues from the Shadow Cabinet to say to him, look, we are in serious trouble here. The party is being pulled apart by two opposing wings and the centre quite literally cannot hold. 
So we've got to find a way to heal this party, unite the party, and move us forward as an effective force. One of the ways that I'd asked him to do that was about appointing a new shadow cabinet that was broad and inclusive and drew on all of the talents mm. and all of the traditions across the party. There's a good reason for wanting to do that. You know, we've just had the Chilcot report, which shows the real danger of where you have a small group of like-minded people around the leader making decisions without challenge. Now, the truth is that Jeremy came in on a platform that, was, that challenged that rightly and said that culture has to change. But actually what's happened is that his leadership has carried that culture forward. We cannot afford for these two opposing wings of the party to fight a battle that will literally smash the party to pieces. We have to find a way to heal and unite. He may not have started this, and I genuinely believe that he didn't, but he is the leader, and the leader has a unique responsibility to try and fix it. Mm. Only the leadership can reach out and heal and unite. And what became really apparent to me in that meeting was that not only was the leadership of the party unable to do that, they were actually unwilling to do it as well. And a lot of members are angry about the timing of what's happened because we had obviously Brexit and this was, Britain was enveloped in its arguably greatest crisis since 1945. Yeah. And it was a crisis which should have been where we should all be talking about the Conservatives, the mess within the Conservative Party and all the rest. But instead, the very workings of the opposition at a time of turmoil have been shut down so the government can't be held to account. Yeah. Now, I mean, that leaves a lot of people feeling very angry yeah. because they feel, you know, they could have waited for two or three weeks, put up a stalking horse yeah. challenge and kept the opposition going. Yeah. But the opposition has now collapsed as a force because there aren't the people there to man it. Yeah, I think there's a right way and a wrong way to challenge a leader. And I think that this has been a shambles, frankly. When it became apparent that we were in leadership contest territory, I went in to see Jeremy the morning after the wave of resignations and said to him, the question now is how you respond. As the leader of the party, it is really only within your gift to heal this and I will help. And the only way that you heal it is that you reach out to the other side, you make gestures to the other side, not perhaps to the small minority of people who have never wanted you to succeed, who've really disrespected not just you, mm. but the office of the leader of the Labour Party, but the vast majority of people in the membership and in here mm. who actually believe that you can make it work, but want to see unity and want to see a party leader who's prepared to respect and embrace those traditions. Well, in terms of going next, you're backing Owen Smith, he's standing. Yeah. Now, Owen Smith, he's a former political advisor. He's a former lobbyist for Pfizer. Is he really a credible alternative to Jeremy Corbyn? Well, look, what I want in a leader of the Labour Party is I want somebody who is a socialist, but has a real plan about where this country is going. I want someone who really genuinely respects every tradition in this party and recognises that where we've won important battles, we've done so because we work together to achieve it. And I want someone who is not interested in the 80s fighting the 90s, but is interested in what the next decade and decades to come will bring for this country and what Labour can do as a force to help shape that. And I think that Owen can do all of those things. The debate that we're currently stuck in has become so toxic, so angry and so backward looking that I think the sensible majority in the centre of the party, in the Parliamentary Labour Party and in the membership have been silenced. And I think Owen can give them a voice and he has to give them a voice if we're going to be able to speak to the country again. There's a meme going around Twitter at the moment where people worry, for example, that Owen Smith will support the privatisation of our National Health Service, the proudest achievement of the Labour Party. And that's yeah. because he worked for Pfizer and Pfizer is yeah. uh, you know, a company which would, 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 would benefit from such a thing. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be loads of this, right? And it's so, not, is it nonsense, it's, categorically? It's, what's an entirely publicly it, run yeah, national health service? Yeah, no exactly, privatisation. It's absolute nonsense from start to finish. And I think, you know, part of it has been sparked by the fact that he worked for a pharmaceutical company. I would say that, having seen how a pharmaceutical company and capitalism operates from the inside is probably quite important, to be honest. If you're going to critique it, you need to understand it. If I was going to be cynical, I'd say this. Owen Smith has gone, look, the membership shifted to the left. The only way I can win is being with a left-wing message. I'll win, then I'll just tack off to the right on yeah. loads of issues and I'll crush the left within the Labour mm -hmm. Party administratively. Yeah. Well, How I, could you be assured that that's just not his game plan? Well, look, I think, I think the problem is this at the moment, is that the centre-left in the Labour Party will be crushed if the party splits. 
because we've got two extremes on each side who are more interested in fighting one another than they are in uniting this party and winning us a general election. We're about to be tugged apart. If the party splits, it will leave the centre-left as not a force in British politics and it will leave the working classes with nowhere to go. If you want to save the left in British politics, the only way to do it is to unite and heal. And I don't believe for a minute, actually, that Owen or anybody else in this, in this party is just trying to work out how best to plot to become leader of the party. Is trying to sort of pitch where they think they can best you know, best win a leadership election. I just genuinely don't believe that. The Conservatives now have their second female Prime Minister. Yeah. How many women Prime Ministers has Labour had? None. How many elected, so how many elected women as leader has Labour had? Uh, none. None. Right. I tried to get you, as you know, to stand for leader the, uh, in the aftermath of the last general election. You were very irritated about can, it. Can I just point out why I was irritated You had about a kid it. at the time. You just had a kid. I, had, I, had a, I think I had a 10-day-old baby, and I turned my phone on to find thousands of messages from people and my entire Twitter timeline completely jammed with well, you know, people debating well, the pros and cons of me The people were not running it, you know, you can't, you know, just what the people wanted. Just let me know Whatever, because of so your I'll family turn, circumstances. Turn my, yeah. Oh, just because I've got a 10 just month, a 10 day old kid, I can't even stand for leader. Okay, fair enough, that didn't happen. Um, you don't have a baby this time. Uh, I do have a baby. Oh, you I've do have a baby. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you don't have a newborn yeah. baby. I've not you sent, don't have him, a new, sent him off to boarding school at the age of one. I'm just going to row back from talking about your family because I feel uncomfortable doing I, it. I so why it. aren't you standing? Why does it have to be Owen Smith? Why do you, I mean, I'm getting you to talk about Owen Smith and all these, you're talking yeah. very passionately about things you believe in, what you want to be heard. Yeah. So why don't you stand? Well, honestly, because I think we're beyond any kind of, you know, I want to be leader of the Labour Party now. We are literally looking at a question of survival for the Labour Party. Can you unite and heal this party? And then once you've won a leadership contest, can you hold the party together with both hands? So why not you? Well, because I don't think I'm the right person to do it, to be honest. I, d I don't want to be leader of the Labour Party. You'll be the first to know if that ever changes, but, Thanks. you know, I just think Jamie. you have to be honest about it. A lot of people go, well, look, I really, really love Jamie Corbyn. I love his values and his principles. I've got reservations, though, about in terms of communication or competence or whatever, yeah. but they just think we're just going to end up going back to the, those, you know, immigration mugs and, uh, you know, backpedalling on things. Jeremy gave voice to a lot of people, including me, who were absolutely desperate about the, the symbolism of things like the immigration mug. You know, there was a great recognition, right, in the 1990s from the sort of leadership in the party gathered around John Smith that it's not enough to just ignore where the public are. You have to understand where the public are, not so that you just go to them and say, right, I'm planting my flag here, I agree with everything. But so that you can go and have a genuine conversation with people on their terms and on the issues where you really care, where you feel strongly, help to turn people in support of your values and your causes and your policies. And for me, at its best, politics is about that. It's about showing leadership and it's about getting out ahead of public opinion and helping to change the situation. And that was a great recognition. And New Labour, I think, did that really brilliantly on some areas, particularly things like um, civil partnerships and LGBT rights. But where I think New Labour lost its way was where instead of saying we go to where people are in order to understand and move the conversation forwards they just said we go to where people are and we do whatever the polling tells us and the immigration mug was a symbol of that for me now i'm not alone in my generation of mps in feeling that we must never ever allow ourselves to go back to a situation where we're printing messages like that on mugs. mugs. <laughs> yeah, and the, the thing about Owen's campaign is he has managed to galvanise that group of members of parliament who feel very strongly about that. The best defence against that is that we unite this party and we give real voice to the members and we get into government so that we can make actual meaningful changes to people's lives. You know, mm. the, the frustration of being in opposition is that you do end up resorting to slogans and sound bites. I didn't come into politics to say the right thing. I came into politics to do the right thing. And that means we've got to heal these divisions and we've got to move forwards and win an election. Lisa's a class act, whatever your own stance on the Labour Party is, but I want to hear what you think, you know? Is that convincing? Uh, what does it make you think about Jeremy Corbyn or Owen Smith? 
Uh, do you think there's any resolution to Labour's troubles so that the party can actually come together and you know, actually take on the Tories rather than fighting amongst each other? Uh, so please do leave your comments. We've got loads of other interviews, so do click on them. We've got many more interviews to come, hopefully with Jeremy Corbyn and MP supporting him. Uh, so subscribe. I'll see you next time.